Hey, YouTubers, Facebookers and Instagrammers. So I thought I'd make a video today on what is the working cocker? Well, the working cocker is a little hunting dog. The slightly smaller cousin of the Springer Spaniel. I've made lots of videos on this before, but I thought I'd predominantly focus on the cocker as it probably makes up 80% of the dogs that I see, whether through my online training or through lessons in person. And the Cocker is a fantastic little dog, okay? But it comes with a few warnings and things that you need to be aware of. So just fundamentally telling you the difference between the Cockers and the Springers, they're both pretty much designed to do the same job, which is to hunt, find game, flush it, and then hopefully retrieve it. The fundamental difference between the Cockers and the Springers, this is a bit of a saying which is, Springers hunt really well to fine scent, meaning that they hunt pretty well consistently to fine game, okay? The cockers, there's a traditional saying, which is cockers hunt well on scent. So the problem with cockers is that they can be much more up and down in the way that they operate, basically. So with a Springer, they tend to show you most of their energy all the time. So they're very, very sort of linear in their progression. So they're hunting all the time, they're trying to find scent, they go on scent, they lift up a little bit, they find game, and then the idea for them to is then flush the game and then be steady. The cockers, they can be quite flat if they're not on good scent. And so they can suddenly speed up when they hit a patch of scent. And this makes them a little bit more volatile in their behaviour. That is what tends to catch people out an awful lot. I think the popularity of cockers has come from the fact that they're a bit smaller. Uh, they certainly don't leave white hair everywhere like a springer's a bit more prone to doing. And so I think that's where their popularity has come. They're also incredibly cute, cute, sorry. They are very loyal, but only up to a point. I think if I spoke to most of my clients, they would always say how wonderful their dogs are in the house. And predominantly in a the house, they don't cause too much problem. I would still bring them up quite restrictively in the early stages so that you don't uh, create behaviours that could be avoided. And that's what I work with a lot of my clients, especially online, at trying to develop the dog over time. I think the thing that catches people out an awful lot is that these dogs take time to train. What you get at six months, eight months, 18 months and two years, those stages change massively. So at eight or 10 months old, you can have a dog that essentially seems like an adult dog. And at that point, they haven't really sort of developed a lot of their natural instincts. And so you can sort of be tricked into thinking, oh, everything's okay. I get an awful lot of phone calls from clients, uh, messages on Instagram, on Facebook, and YouTube, um, saying, you know, they've watched my videos, everything that I try and preach, they might have experienced, and now they've got a problem. And that's the thing that I'm trying to work with my clients along the line, a lot of the time, to try and prevent them later on. But the problem is, until you sort of experience some of the issues, it can be hard to believe that that little dog at six or eight, 10, 12 months that you've got that's sticking with you still could end up causing you problems. Admittedly, I am seeing a lot more dogs now due to the popularity of the breed where the instinct is being slightly reduced, but that normally comes with a double-edged sword, especially with the cocker. So I am seeing more and more cockers that are plodding about and, and pottering and not sort of hunting that hard. But then that dagger in the side comes when they find something and they're gone. So the art with them is to really treat them like the dog that they've still been bred to do. Now the best way to that is if you're looking for any help is to work with a spaniel specialist or certainly a gun dog specialist. The domestic sector tend to not understand the breed enough and so don't help to put in place uh, the training stages to work through. They're a great dog and they're very, very rewarding when you get it right, but it's also incredibly frustrating when it goes wrong or if you sort of go into it sort of naively. What you're really looking to do is work with the dog in and around you. So I think we get very quickly, we get them walking on the lead, we're going out for walks and they're generally quite well socialized and stuff. They often end up pulling like tanks on lead, which is quite normal. But the issue isn't really when they're on the lead, it's when you sort of give them that freedom. And as I said, as a very small puppy, when you first get them, you're having to be careful that you're not standing on them. They're that close to you all the time. But over time, they start to edge further and further away from you. And that might be as early as four months. It might be 14 months. 
it varies from dog to dog but it is really really important to develop your training with the breed that you buy so if you go and buy a cockapoo or a labrador or a pointer or a doberman or whatever domestic breeds people are buying you're not really going to uh, have the issues that you're going to specifically specifically get with a hunting dog so as I've made videos on this before, so I don't want to go over it too much, but basically your dog's instinct, what it wants to do over time, and it doesn't necessarily happen straight away, is what your dog wants to do is hunt, find game, flush it, probably end up chasing it. And if it was allowed to sort of allow its natural instincts to go all the way to fruition, it would want to chase, catch, kill, and potentially even eat. Now our job as a gun dog trainer is to suppress and enhance certain parts of that element. Again, I've covered this before, but we really need to avoid the end result of the dog finding game. So often you're sort of out for nice walks and you're in the countryside and that all seems like the right thing to do. But one day your dog will find something and take a couple of steps on it. And you might call the dog back and it comes back and you think, hey, I'm not too bad at this. But then six months later, that couple of steps is the dog chasing game. And nine times out of 10, it starts finding things. Maybe it might be a Jenny Wren, it might be a Blackbird, it might be a Partridge or a Pheasant or a Hare or a Rabbit. But that now means that that dog wants to be further and further away from you. <clears throat> Especially if it knows the walk that you're going on regularly, the dog starts galloping on a bit ahead. Now, if your dog regularly starts to now find something 50 yards away from you, that's where your dog then wants to be. What you've really got to do is try and embrace your dog's natural instincts and learn to work with it and understand it and control and manipulate it rather than sort of stick your head in the sand and say oh you know that's not going to happen and unfortunately that happens an awful lot so as i said as a gun dog trainer and especially in spaniels what i try and do is get people to understand and develop their training with the habits and the instinct that's going to come and that way you stand a much better chance when you then get into trouble later down the line now a lot of people come and see me and I say, oh, you know, how far is your dog going away? And they say, oh, you know, you know, 50 yards up there. But really, you're wanting to keep that dog within about 14 to 16 feet of you all the time. And that means developing and learning how to understand to manipulate and control what your dog is going to want to do, which often it's just pottering around at first. But as that instinct in the dog develops, and that might be 12, 18, 20 months, the dog starts to hunt more and more and more. And then unfortunately you don't end up having those safeguards in place to manipulate and control it. So rather than sort of ignore it and say, I don't want it or it's not going to happen, you're much better off learning how to control and develop that training to keep the dog underneath your toes. If the dog is under your toes all the time, you stand a much better chance of controlling that dog and keeping yourself out of those issues that come later on. So I think, as I just said, like rather than trying to say that's not going to happen, embrace it learn how to control it again you hear me talk about retrieving a lot of the time if you can teach the dog to retrieve you can get the dog back with something it doesn't necessarily want to return to you with you can start to manipulate and interact and control your dog on a short distance okay these dogs will exercise even at very six months old they'll do a lot of exercise but it doesn't necessarily make it right you know a lot of people say oh you know at 12 months when they come and see me and i'm like having to start to restrict their movements and start to teach them what I call control under freedom, which is learning how to manipulate that hunt. They're already letting the dog go along a lot further away from them. And because they've settled into just taking the dog out for a walk, that really sets them up to going wrong. <clears throat> so as I said, really trying to understand this dog is the most important thing for the dog's development long term. And don't worry about having to do 40 minute walks at 8, 10, 12 months, you don't need to do that. What you need is small amounts of intense training and a lot of avoidance in the early stages. And only worry about the next stage as you can do the first stage uh, first. So I'll give you an example. A lot of the time when you're building of layers of training, until one part is really, really good, you don't want to do the next part. Because as soon as you start focusing on the next part of training, you take your eye off the early part. So for example, with my clients, I'm doing lead work, we get them walking nicely, sitting up, a little bit of sit and stay. Although I don't use the word stay, it's just sit. We talk, we talk, we've covered that in past videos. As soon as I start putting a retrieve into that or something else, they start taking their eye off the heel element. 
heel element, sorry. So it's really important to get each part really, really good where you don't have to overthink it and the dog understands what you want before you do the next layer. And as a novice, that is going to be quite slow. And you've got to hold back your instincts to get out there in the countryside and do things too quickly. Work on it slowly. A lot of trainers don't even get their dogs out of their kennels till seven or eight months and start training them, okay? But they do each stage really well and they know what not to do and what to do. Anyway, I hope this helps a little bit. There's so many different parts that I can cover. If you're looking for some help or you're thinking about buying a puppy this spring, summer, and you're looking for some help, go through to my Facebook page, Spaniel, uh, Hampshire Spaniel Training, where you can send me a message and I can potentially help you with structuring your training uh, and guiding you through that process, which makes up the majority of my work, working with people from eight weeks onwards. Um, it's not a sales tactic, but the reality is with these type of dogs, you want to look for a specialist that's going to work with you. And if you go to the domestic sector, they're not generally set up and experienced with dealing with hunting dogs. Okay, so that is something that you, you really do want to sort of bear in mind. Embrace the dog as it is, learn to manage it and control it, and use that instinct to your advantage and not ignore it and hope that it doesn't happen because that is when it's dangerous. I'd be interested to hear of any of people's experiences with their hunting and any experience with training. Perhaps drop that in the description below. Drop down and give me a comment. I'd be really keen to hear your experiences of that. And as I said, if you're looking for any training, uh, online training support, go through to my Facebook page, Hampshire Spaniel Training, and I'll do my best to help you guys.